Hello ladies and gents, in this video we're going to create a game card using Photoshop. For this project we're going to try to create the card that you see in front of you on your screen. To do this you're going to need three files. You're going to need the poker card template which looks like this. You're going to need the poker card A4 print which looks like this. And we're going to lay out our artwork in the card template when we're done. And you're also going to need a reference image. So I took this from an existing game and I just uh, took a screenshot of a, um, a game card that I found online. But you might have um, a design that you've sketched out or drawn. You can use any design in your project, but just for this example, we'll stick with this reference image. And what we're going to do is make a card that looks very similar. And in the end, we'll have this game card. So start by going to the poker card template and let's just look at the template to see what's on it. We've got a collection of lines. These light blue lines are guides. And to, to see these, if you go to view, show, and we've got guides here, we can turn these on and off. So just by clicking on that, we can turn them off. And by going to view, show, guides we can turn them back on or you can use the keyboard shortcut which is just command and the semicolon key to turn them on and off now to create these lines you'll need to make sure that your ruler is switched on so again go to view rulers and you can see now I've got a ruler around the side of my workspace to add these guidelines click on the ruler click and hold either the mouse button or the trackpad and just drag them onto your canvas and you can use them to guide where you lay out the different parts of your artwork. You can click on individual ones with the move tool selected which is the tool in the very top left hand side of the screen and when they're dark blue you can click and hold and move them around or you can click and just press the delete key to get rid of them permanently. You can bring in vertical guidelines using the ruler at the side and dragging them into the screen that way. Now the other lines on this page, we can see we've got a red line. And if I just turn the guidelines off for a moment, you can see there's a, a light blue line and then there's a green line. So the red line is called the bleed. You want any artwork to extend at least to the bleed or beyond. This means that when you cut your game cards out, you won't have any little white slivers where you don't have any artwork or any color. The light blue line is called the trim. The trim is actually the cutting line. So when we cut out the cards, that's the line we'll follow. And the green line is the safe zone. So any important parts of artwork need to be within this safe space. So any um, images, if we look at the reference image, like the, uh, the tabs, the numbers, the, um, the little details around the side of the card and the central artwork with that little gremlin with the spear, they are all within the safe zone of the template. Right, so if I turn on the guidelines again, remember it's command and the semicolon key to turn those guidelines back on. Let's start to make the card. So the first thing we're going to do is take the reference image and make sure that you have selected the background layer. So you can see that background layer in the bottom right hand side of the screen is highlighted in gray. Just hit command A on your keyboard to select all. And you know it's selected because you can see these little dotted lines that look like ants moving around the canvas. And then go to edit, copy, go to your poker card template and then go to edit, paste and paste that in. And we're going to try and copy parts of this using the different tools available to us in Photoshop. Now we're going to create the background color of our card. To do that, click on the rectangle tool, which is at the bottom left hand side of the screen. If you see a different tool selected, so maybe the ellipse tool or the polygon tool, just click on it and hold the trackpad or mouse button and you'll see um, all of the tools in that slot will appear and you can just pick the rectangle tool. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle on the screen and we'll extend beyond the bleed. It doesn't matter if it's bigger than the canvas because we won't see that bit. Um, and then release the mouse button or trackpad button to create that rectangle. And you can see it's this light brown color, which I'll use later, but I don't want right now. So I'm going to change the fill color. You can change the fill color in the properties panel on the right hand side of the screen or at the top 
of the screen. Um, it won't appear in the properties panel until you've actually drawn the rectangle itself. So you can't just click on the tool and then the fill color appears. You need to actually draw a rectangle. So I'm gonna click on the fill color and I'm going to, um, I could use the color picker here by clicking on this icon and changing the color. Or what I can do is I can go to the example card and I can click on the color picker here in the bottom left hand side of the screen that's set foreground color and then the color picker will appear and you can use the ink dropper tool to click on a section of the example to choose that exact shade of red and then click OK and then I'm going to go back to the poker card template and now when I click on the fill color you can see in recently used colors there's that exact shade of red so I can click that and now I've got this red rectangle. Um, we don't see the stroke color around the side because it's off the canvas so you can either turn that off entirely or just turn it to red because you won't see it either way. Um, so with that done click on the move tool and click on the background to deselect that rectangle and now go to the rectangle tool again and this time we're going to draw another rectangle in the safe zone of the card. So I'm going to go from using the guidelines from the intersection point of the, the inner guidelines for the safe zone and it just kind of snaps into place um, as we get down towards the other uh, area where the guidelines meet. Now obviously this rectangle is red so it looks like there's one rectangle so we're going to change the fill color and we're going to use this beige color here uh, that I've used recently but you can use any color that you want. So I've got this beige color here. Now I'm just going to click on the uh, properties panel just to exit that window and if I scroll down here in the properties panel you can see I've got four um, little boxes with zero pixels in them um, and this is where we curve the edges of the rectangle the bigger the number the kind of bigger the curve so I'm going to change this to 30 pixels and when I press enter you can see they're all linked so they all change and if I click on the move tool and then click on the background to deselect you can see that the um, beige rectangle now has these curved edges. So that was the look that I was going for. Now go to the layers panel and just very briefly turn the visibility by clicking on the eye icon of rectangle one and two. So I've turned those off and you can just click that rectangle to uh, click the eye icon to bring them back. Um, if you need them, but I'm just going to turn the visibility off momentarily. And what I'm going to do now is create these tabs with the numbers in. So to do that, I need to use something called the pen tool. And the pen tool is again towards the bottom left hand side of the screen. So I'm going to click on the pen tool. And if we look at the top of the screen, we've got fill color and stroke color for the pen tool. So it's already red. Um, I want to use the same color as the, the border, that bigger rectangle we created before, but you can use any color you want, but I'm going to use that shade of red that I'd used before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the, um, the safe zone here, that, that intersection point, and then click at the bottom of that tab where it ends to add another anchor point. And then I'm going to add another anchor point just before that curve begins there. And you can see now I've got three anchor points, so that's made a triangle. Now for the fourth anchor point, I'm going to click and hold the mouse button. And as I move the cursor away from the anchor point, you see that curve gets bigger or smaller and bends in different directions. So you just want to create a gentle curve that you're happy with. And then when you're happy with that curve, then you can release the mouse or trackpad button and we can continue making this tab. So I'm going to click at the top here on that guideline. And then finally, I'm going to connect to the first anchor point just to finish that shape. Right, so with that tab made, I need to right click where it says shape one. I'm actually gonna rename this. So I'll double click in the layers panel, I'll double click on shape one, and I'm gonna give it a name, top tab, because I should be renaming these layers. And then I'm going to right click on that layer and I'm going to go to duplicate layer. Where it allows us to enter a name, I'm going to change that to bottom tab, just so I can keep track of all of these layers and click okay. 
Now make sure the bottom tab layer is selected. And what I'm going to do is go to Edit, Transform Path, Rotate. Now I can move the cursor towards the side of the tab and move it manually. Or, because I want to flip it 180 degrees, I'll just type in the, uh, the rotation box here, 180. And then when I'm happy with that transformation, I can click on the check mark and then use the move tool to move that tab into place and it will just kind of snap into the guidelines there. Okay, all right. So what I need to do now is add, if we look at the example, we've got some numbers in these tabs. So that's what I want to add next. So I'm going to use the type tool, which again is towards the um, bottom of the left hand um, toolbar. So click on the type tool and you can choose a font um, that you'd like. So I'll just pick something simple. I'll just go with uh, something boring. I'll just use Arial for this example. Nothing too exciting. Um, you can change the size of the font and whether it's like bold or italic in these here. And you can change the color of the font here. So I'm going to change this red color because I want to be able to see the number to white. And then click OK. And now I'm just going to just click on the canvas um, and you can see this text is very large. I don't want that 98 point. So I'm just going to make it smaller. I'll make it 36. Right now I'm just going to hit one um, and I'm happy with that. So I'll click on the check mark and I'll use the move tool to drag that one into the tab. And if you can't get like pixel perfect placement, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to um, move it around pixel by pixel until you're happy with it. Uh, so if you look at the layers panel, now I've got a text layer with one on it. What I'm going to do is right click that layer and go to duplicate layer again. And I can leave this as one copy for the time being. I can always rename it later and just click OK. And what I'm going to do is make sure that layer is selected. So one copy is highlighted in light gray. Again, just like before, go to edit, transform, and then rotate. And then in the rotation box there, I'm going to type 180 and then click on the check mark and then make sure the move tool is clicked. And I'm just going to move that into position in the bottom tab. And again, if you're not happy with that, use the arrow keys to kind of make it pixel perfect. Right, so if I just turn the visibility of rectangle two and rectangle one back on, you can see the cards coming together nicely now. So I'm just going to toggle the visibility again so that I can look at the center artwork of the reference image. And I'm going to drag some new guidelines in. So I'm going to bring a guideline down to about maybe the center point of that writing. And then another guideline, I'm going to put it at this little gremlin's feet. Um, and then I'll bring a guideline in from the side uh, and we'll put it right at the edge of that first tab. And then another guideline at the edge of the other tab. So now I've got this box where I can create some artwork. So what I'm going to do now is I can turn the visibility back on for the other rectangles that I drew before. And what I'm going to do now is use the pen tool to create some central artwork. So if I look at the example, I've got this Pac-Man ghost. So that's what I'm going to try and create now. To do that, go back into your poker card template file and then click on the pen tool. Um, I want to make this ghost green. So I'll go to the fill color and I'll choose, I've got a recently used shade of green, but you can use any color if you use the color mixer there. Uh, but I'll just use this recently used shade of green. And also remember to change the stroke color, otherwise you might have um, a color border around the ghost. So we've changed the fill and stroke color to green. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to place some anchor points to uh, guide the layout of this ghost. So I'll go to where these two lines intersect and then I'll click to add an anchor point. And I'll go about three quarters of the way up and then I will click to add another anchor point. And then before I place a third one, I'm gonna place another guideline right in the center and this will just snap into the center of the canvas. Uh, and now where those intersecting lines meet, um, I'm going to click and hold for that third anchor point. I've still got my finger down on the mouse button and I'm just going to create a curve for the ghost's head. 
and then I'll bring another guideline in and I'll bring that in line with that second anchor point that I drew and now I'm going to click where those lines meet and it'll just mirror that curve and then I'll go down to the bottom of this section and now I've got the start of the shape of the ghost so all I'm going to do now is give it that little zigzag bit at the bottom of its body so to do that I'm just going to add some anchor points just to create that zigzag look there we go okay so I'm happy with that so now the ghost just needs some eyes so what we can do now is click on the rectangle tool but this time click and hold and select the ellipse tool uh, with that selected now the ghost is still highlighted um, so before I do anything what I should do is click on the move tool and just click on the background to deselect that right now it's deselected now I'll go back to the ellipse tool and I'm going to change the fill color to white so white fill white stroke and I'm going to draw the eyes for the ghost there we go um, and so in the layers panel now we've got ellipse one what I'll do is I'll right click that and I'll go to duplicate layer and just make a copy so click OK use the move tool and move that copy to the side there we go and you can see those pink lines there making sure that we've lined this up correctly um, I'll use the ellipse tool again and this time I'll set the fill color to blue for the eyes now you see the way that eye changed because um, I hadn't deselected that eye so I'll just make that white again click on the move tool click on the background uh, to make sure everything's deselected right now go back to the ellipse click on the fill color change the fill color and change the stroke and I'm going to draw the pupil for this eye there and then it's just the same as before for this uh, ellipse 2 I'm going to duplicate that layer click OK I'm going to use the move tool to move that pupil to the other side and if you aren't sure whether it's pixel perfect you can use the arrow keys to just move that around now I'm going to click on the move tool again click on the background to deselect everything and there we go we've got our completed game card the next step is to turn off the guidelines so if I go to view show guides I'm going to turn these off and the reason I want to do that is to make sure that the tabs are lined up perfectly so you see there's this little sliver of beige here I don't want that I want to get rid of that so what I'm going to do is go into the um, the layers panel and I'll click on the top tab and what I'm going to do make sure the move tool is selected and I'm going to use the arrow keys to just move that up by a pixel or two and then click on the background to deselect and you can see that little beige sliver is gone now so now the card looks correct there are no errors so what I need to do now is turn this into one piece of artwork that I can transfer into our A4 print page so to do that I'm going to go back to the poker card template and I'm going to go to the layers panel and I'm going to scroll to the very top layer so the very top layer is ellipse 2 and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom layer of the card which is rectangle 1 and I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard and then click on rectangle 1 and you can see all the layers that are visible in our artwork are now highlighted in light grey I haven't selected the reference image layer or the um, guidelines that we looked at before the bleed trim and safe zone or the background layer we don't need those we just need the layers that make up the actual card itself with those selected if you look at the very bottom right hand side of the screen you'll see there's a white folder and this folder creates a group so if we click that it will put all of those layers into a folder and if you click on the little arrow next to this group one we can open that folder up and we can see all of the layers are inside okay so what I want to do is merge all of these layers together to do that make sure you've clicked on the group one folder so not the layers inside the group one folder itself you can see that's highlighted in light gray and then hit on your keyboard command option 
and E. And what that will do is it will merge all of the layers in that folder and create this merged collection of layers into one image and it will place that new group outside of the folder. So you can see in the layers panel now I've got group one merged. So what I'll do is I'll change this name. I'm going to call this card one. And now I've done that, what I can do is hit command A to select all of that. You need to make sure that the card one layer is selected, otherwise you'll be copying nothing. So hit command A to select all and then go to edit, copy, and then go to your poker card A4 print page and then you can hit edit, paste. And now just use the move tool to move that card into place on your template. And you can see here, it still follows those three guidelines. We've got all of the key bits of artwork in the safe zone. We've got the red border before the cutting line, and then we've got the border extending into the bleed. Now, I want variations of this card, so I don't want to have to create this card from scratch. So to avoid doing that and to just speed up the variation creation process, go back to your poker card template. Just click on the background to deselect that or click on the marquee tool here and click on the background to just deselect that select all box. And now what we're going to do is go into this group one folder and we're going to make changes to a few of these layers. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the color of the rectangle one. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see in the properties panel the fill color appears. So I'm going to change that to blue. And then I'll change the stroke color to blue. Now why isn't this changing color? Well that's because if we go to the top, card one is still the top layer here and that's visible. So I need to turn that visibility off. And now you can see the layers below. So that rectangle that I just changed, now you can see that that color change did actually um, change when I, when I changed the color. So I'm going to leave rectangle two as it is. We'll leave that beige color as it is. But I'm going to go and change the color of the tabs. So click on the top tab layer. Now you can see in the properties panel, the stroke and fill color haven't appeared because we need to click on the pen tool because that was the tool that was used to create these shapes. So when you click on the pen tool, if you look in the very top of the screen, there is the fill and the stroke. So I'm gonna change the fill and stroke to that blue color. And then I'll repeat that process for the bottom tab. So click on the tab, make sure the pen tool is selected so if you have like the move tool selected, those properties disappear. So you need to make sure that the pen tool is selected. Go to the fill color, change that. There we go. And so now we've got a card that's almost done. We're going to change the color of the ghost. So click on shape one, and I should really name that so I know what it is. So I'm gonna call it ghost, so double click on the name, call it ghost, there we go. And again, because this was made with the pen tool, make sure the pen tool is clicked and you'll be able to access the fill and stroke color. So I'm gonna change this to, I'll use this purple color. So I'll change the stroke and fill to purple. And then finally, um, I need to change the number on the card. So click on the type tool and you can just click and drag over to highlight the numbers. So you don't even need to click in the layers panel. You can just click and, and highlight them using the cursor. And I'm going to change that to two for card two and then click on the check mark in the top towards the uh, top right of the screen to apply that change and then click and highlight the other number and hit two on the keyboard to change that. And then just click on the check to apply that change. So now I need to merge these new changed layers together. So I'll click on the group one folder again. So remember, not the layers inside, make sure that the group one folder is highlighted. And then again, on your keyboard, hit Command Option E. And there we go, we've got another group with group one merged. I'm gonna rename this, I'm gonna call it Card Two. And then I'll hit Command A to select all. 
edit, copy, go to the print template, and then go to edit, paste. And using the move tool, I'm gonna to move that into place again, just like that. And all you'd need to do is keep going back into your poker card template. Remember, hit the marquee tool and click on the, uh, the background to deselect everything. But you'd basically keep going into this group one folder and making more changes. And always remember to turn off the visibility of the cards that you've already copied and pasted into the print template. So that when you go and make changes to these layers, you can actually see those changes. So if I turn the visibility of card one back on, that's the top layer. So it will block the visibility of all the changes that I'm making. So don't forget to turn the visibility of these off. So I can now create card one, card two, card three, card four, and so on. And I can do that for as many cards as I want. Um, what I can also do is make a copy of this group one folder. And so to do that, I can just right click it and go to duplicate. Oh, made a mistake there. Let me command Z. Uh, right click it and go to duplicate group. And I might call this something else. So I'll call this maybe background or uh, card, card back. There we go. And what I can do is I can start to make changes um, in this folder and create the back of a card, but I'm not going to do it in this example. Um, so I'll close that folder down and we've still got group one there. I'm going to rename that folder card front. And this way you can just start to edit existing cards and you don't have to remake everything from scratch. I should note as well, we created this ghost in Photoshop using the pen tool. But what you can do is you can use some kind of other art package like um, Adobe Illustrator to make some artwork and um, then just import it by opening up uh, the file. Make sure you save it as a PNG, but open the file just like we did with the reference image. And then you can copy and paste different bits that you've made outside of Photoshop into your artwork. And that's it. So that's how you make game cards in Photoshop. Have a go yourself and see if you can make some excellent looking cards for your tabletop game.